going to present the paper Quality Metrics and Oracles for Autonomous Vehicles Testing. This is a joint work with my dear colleagues, Sandra Estocco and Paolo Tonella. And this paper has been presented at ICST this year. So, uh, testing out of autonomous vehicles aims to ensure that these vehicles are ready to drive the roads and while doing so, keeping the people inside them as well as those outside safe. So the research in this area is in its infancy and the question of how we should actually measure the quality of driving is an important one to answer. The major producers of autonomous vehicles report metrics such as the number of miles driven or the frequency of human intervention when they talk about their testing processes. However, these metrics are too coarse grained and they do not provide enough detailed information to actually know how the quality of the driving was. If we look into some academic words, we could see that many of them focus on safety requirements, such as the car should not cause an out of bounds scenario, as it's shown in this image, or the car should not cause a collision with another car, with a pedestrian or with any other object. While these safety requirements are indeed vital, they, however, only react to very dramatic scenarios. There are also some works that focus on threshold-based uh, oracles that would use uh, some common metrics as steering angle, for example, and check whether the uh, steering angle predicted by the deep learning model is different from the ground truth steering angle by more than, let's say, five degrees, and use such uh, values as threshold-based oracles. However, they do not provide any information on which set of metrics we should actually use and how the value of this threshold should be calculated. So usually in the papers, they use some arbitrary value. And these two questions are exactly the focus of our work, which consists of three different studies. The first study that we perform is a systematic search of the literature. So as I said before, uh, testing autonomous vehicles is a new field. However, there exists a huge literature in uh, actually evaluating the quality of human driving under different circumstances. For example, when the driver is sleepy, the driver is drunk, has a, some specific disease or just distracted. So my well, favorite example, let's say, in, this, in the papers that I've seen so far of this nature is when they were measuring the quality of driving with spider phobic people while they were holding a conversation about spiders. So I don't know how they got an ethical approval for that one. But the overall idea is that these papers, these works, they measure uh, the quality of human driving. So maybe some of those metrics can be also useful in, in measuring the quality of driving of autonomous vehicles. So once we were able to extract some metrics, we proceeded with empirical validation of these metrics to check whether actually these metrics are useful in a simulated driving scenario and whether they correlate with the human's perception of the high quality uh, simulated driving. And once we had uh, checked out these metrics empirically, we then proceeded with the construction of threshold based oracles as just having raw values of some metric does not tell us whether this behavior is actually acceptable or unacceptable. So now that we have the overall picture in mind, let's uh, go into details about each of the studies. So for systematic search of the literature, we started with a database search on Scopus. Our searching contained words that entail the quality of driving as well as the object of the driving. And then we ensured that the papers are in the area of engineering and computer science and that they are journal papers or conference papers. So this uh, database search provided us 2,270 papers. And our next step was to analyze abstract of each of these papers. So we had only one inclusion criteria, which is once we have read the abstract, we should see that the driving quality has been quantified in this paper somehow. And we had uh, a number of uh, exclusion criteria. The first one is that the vehicle that is being analyzed in the paper is not a car, so it could be some agricultural machinery, a train, etc. Uh, the second one is that the metrics that are used, they are not driver-based, so 
sometimes in the papers they could have metrics such as the driver's brain activity, eye tracking, posture, arm stiffness, and etc. And finally, is that these metrics are not about the car, so it's not about the engine, wheel, and so after the abstract analysis, we had a significant reduction in the number of papers. So we had 257. And at this point, we had to proceed with analyzing the full uh, text of the paper to get the list of the metrics that they have used, which is, of course, an expensive task. So we conducted a pilot study first with the three authors. Uh, each of the authors was assigned five papers. And there were two assessors per paper. The aim of pilot study, as per usual, was to ensure that the authors understand the task and that they perform it in a similar way. And once we did the pilot study, we distributed the papers sorry, equally between the authors. So we had 83 papers per assessor. After we have uh, extracted the list of the metrics, we uh, grouped them into six different groups. So the first group is lateral position, the second one is speed, the third one steering, followed by headway position, then we have braking, and finally traffic signs. So of course in the paper we have the list of all the metrics, their precise definition and etc. But here to save our time, I will talk only briefly about the metrics that we have in lateral position. So in, in each group, we differentiate between the metrics and events. Each metric has operators associated with it, and the majority of the operators, uh, they aim to provide some ag aggregate value for the raw values of the metric in a given time frame. So for example, standard deviation will give you one value for a set of uh, lateral position values. Some uh, operators uh, are parametric. So for example, this one is deviation from target. You basically can pass it some target lateral position and this will calculate the deviation from that. And also operators can be stuck together. For example, count C means uh, uh, counts the number of times a specific condition is satisfied. So if we do count C deviation from target, then we're looking for cases when some condition on the deviation from target is satisfied. So as I said, we also have events and events also have operators. Uh, the reaction accuracy, for example, measures whether the correct reaction was shown to an event or count, in this case, will count how many times the line crossing the lens has taken place during the driving. So once we had um, our final list of the metrics, uh, we started implementing them in the Udacity platform. And in our experiments, we have used uh, three different tracks. So the first one is a lake track. Here we have one lane, it's wide. Uh, the track has a bridge and it takes place near the lake. So if the car does not keep the lane, there is a risk of uh, falling into the lake. Uh, the second track is the jungle track. This one uh, has very limited visibility because uh, of the elevation changes. Also, the curves are very narrow. And lastly, we have the mountain track which is, uh, consists of three lanes and it has a very gentle bends. So with these uh, three tracks, we proceeded uh, into implementing 26 of the metrics. It should be noted that it's not the full list of the metrics that we have extracted, but because some of the metrics are related to the interrelations between different, between different cars or between the car and the pedestrian, and as uh, the Udacity simulator does not have these actors, uh, so we were not able to implement and evaluate all the metrics. And then uh, once we had the metrics as part of the simulator, we proceeded with human assessment of driving quality. So for that, what we needed is videos of bad driving. So we want to have videos of bad driving, videos of good driving, and ask people whether how they would uh, evaluate this driving. And to create the videos of bad driving, we used uh, mutation uh, testing tools to inject faults into the deep learning model of the car that we are using. Then we generated four questionnaires for each track. So the idea was that uh, we had four questionnaires for track so that we can cover the entirety of track. So for each track, we had videos that were not longer than 10, 15 seconds, and at, they were covering at most from two to three sections. Uh, so in each questionnaire, we had uh, five good driving videos and five bad driving videos and one control video. So the control video was serving the purpose of checking whether the answers are 
provided randomly or not. So this was a video of driving uh, of a very bad quality. It was causing a crash. And if someone gave uh, this video the mark that is uh, higher than the lowest, then we would exclude those responses. So uh, the question uh, looked something like this. There was a video and the participant had to rate it using a five point Likert scale from very poor to excellent. And um, in the end, we were able to recruit 63 participants. The only requirement for the participants was that they have a driving license. Then after we have collected the responses, we measured the agreement for each of the questionnaires. For nine out of 12, we had fair agreement, but for three of uh, 12, we had low agreement. So we excluded those questionnaires from our results. In the end, uh, we had human scores for 96 different videos and we measured the correlation of each of the 26 metrics that we have with the average human score. So our results show that there is a statistically significant correlation for 25 out of 26 metrics and the only metric for which there is no correlation is a maximum of speed and uh, this makes sense because in Udacity Simulator, maximum of speed is actually capped, so it, it cannot be higher than some given value. And the metrics with the highest correlation were the mean of uh, lateral position and standard deviation of brake. And to us, these results are very intuitive because the cars that we have trained to drive on the road, uh, they, are lane, they are performing the lane keeping task. So their main objective is to stay in the middle of the road. And as I mentioned before, in the jungle track, the elevation, there are a lot of elevation changes. So to manage the driving quality, uh, the car has to be able to manage the value of brake very well. So once we have identified that our metrics actually correlate with the human uh, perceived quality of driving, we proceeded uh, to identify the minimal set of metrics that we can use. For that, we uh, identified the principal components. Uh, components. So uh, principal components helped us to reduce the dimensionality of the metric space. Then we identified the metrics that have the highest contribution to the principal components. So here I report the four uh, metrics that has the highest contribution and we again can see that the metrics related to braking and to lane position are on the top. So uh, once uh, we also had this minimal set of the metrics that we can use, we proceeded with our main task, computation of uh, optimal thresholds to generate meaningful oracles. So we are looking into oracles of this type. So let's say we have n metrics, then our oracle would look like for each metric we have a defined threshold and then it's like the concatenation of uh, these um, comparisons with the threshold for the metrics. So a good oracle would pass when the quality of driving is good and it would fail when the quality of driving is bad. So here again we need bad driving situations and we generated those again using mutation testing tools so we used two deep learning mutation testing tools which is deep crime and deep mutation plus plus so to explain what we have done and how our approach worked let let's have a, an example here so let's say we have a road and it has two sectors it's x1 and x2 and let's say we have the original model that drives on this road and we have one mutated model which is faulty that also drives on this road so if we have three metrics on the, the values of which we are recording if we want to to decide the value of this threshold so that uh, the original models always passes and the mutant fails. The first thing we can do, the simplest thing actually, we just get the maximum value of each metric across the sectors and use it as the threshold. Indeed, if we do that, we will see that we can kill this mutant, uh, uh, this mutant at the first sector using uh, two of the three metrics. However, what I'm describing here is a specific case of a more general scenario where we can pass the number of sectors where we accept false positives when the original model is driving by some number epsilon. So in the example I was explaining before that epsilon would be zero, but it could be that we accept false positive in a small number of sectors 
And after uh, we put this condition, what we want to do is to maximize the number of mutants that will be killed. This can be converted into an optimization problem and passed to SMT solver, which then will return us the values of the threshold that satisfies these two conditions. So this is our approach for the generation of optimal thresholds. And we have evaluated it using the DEV2 model. We use this model because it's widely used in the research papers that focus on testing uh, autonomous vehicles. And what we do, we take this model and we generate 50 mutants for it. We then exclude the mutants that uh, when driving in the simulator lead it to a crash because if it crashes, this mutant is killed. So we don't need any more sophisticated oracles to kill this mutant. And in our uh, case, it left us with 28 mutants. We then proceed to with our oracle generation process as described before. And we look into oracles from sizes one to 10, and we consider four different false positive ratios. So in our example, the Udacity simulator has 28 sectors. So this corresponds to allowing uh, false positive in zero sectors, one sector, two sector, and three sectors. So once we have generated the oracles using the DEV2 model, we want to check if our oracle actually works for an unseen model. And for that, we use another deep learning model, Shaffer. And similarly, we generate mutants for it. We again exclude the crash and out of bound causing ones, and we are left with 33. And what we do is we proceed with Oracle evaluation. We measure the false positive rate. That would be the number of sectors in which the chauffeur model uh, does not, the original chauffeur model does not pass our Oracle. And we measure the mutation score on the mutants that have been generated for chauffeur. So uh, in this slide, uh, I am showing you just the part of our results, we actually generated 40 oracles, but I'm showing only the ones that have the most interesting results. So we can see that if we use an oracle of size two, we already have a, an oracle that has 48% mutation killing capability. However, as soon as we allow just uh, 7% of false positives, our oracle is able to kill all the mutants. And if we move further with the oracle of size five, you can see that uh, actually, if we use size five, even with, if we don't allow any false positives, we have an oracle that can kill 64% of mutants. And increasing the size even further, uh, we see that the mutation killing capability of oracle again increases, and we have an oracle that can kill 73% of the mutants. So. Overall, we can see that uh, our approach can generate oracles with various trade-offs between the size of the oracle, the false positive rate, and mutation killing capability. And uh, with that, I am concluding my presentation. So today I talked about the oracles for autonomous vehicles and uh, the uh, metrics that are used in practice right now to build such oracles. I then talked about uh, our paper in which we have conducted three different studies that aim first to identify the list of metrics that we can use for oracles, evaluate them empirically to check whether they actually work in a simulated scenario, and then to construct threshold-based oracles that would differentiate between acceptable and ex unacceptable values of these metrics. Uh, I then described the simulation platforms that we have used and the tracks on which we conducted this experiment. And finally, I showed the results for the oracles that we have generated, hopefully demonstrating that our approach is able to generate powerful oracles. Thank you.